okay? There are ways, and, and we, that'll be a whole other session, but there are ways that um, you can protect your Medicaid eligibility. Um, remember, Medicaid is a health insurance program for poor people. The saying in Columbus and Washington is that our loved ones are the worthy poor, okay? They did nothing to be poor. Not that poor people did, but when I go to the state house, when David goes to the state house to speak on your behalf, it's not a hard sell. Uh, Ohioans, Americans want to use tax dollars to benefit people with disabilities, but we're in the same pool as everyone that's poor. So anything that happens to people who are poor happens to our loved ones because they're in that same pool. But having said that, now that I talked a little about Medicaid, there are two types of Medicaid. There's Medicaid for poor people, and there's something called age, blind, and disabled Medicaid. The, med the benefit package is exactly the same, but when push comes to shove, I can better protect age, blind, and disabled Medicaid, ABD Medicaid. Uh, we get exemptions sometimes from some things that Congress tells us we have to do with Medicaid. Uh, I never used to talk about ABD Medicaid. I do now because Medicaid is under attack in Washington uh, and sometimes it's under attack in Columbus. So the challenge we've got in Ohio is that my child who has a disability may have entered into the Medicaid system because the family is poor, but they have a disability, but they're just part of a poor family. You're getting it. But at 18, they need to be identified as age blind and disabled because they're now an adult and they're not on Medicaid because they live with a poor family. They're on Medicaid because they have a disability and they're also poor, okay? I know, I tell people it takes three times before this sinks in and then when it sinks in, it changes. So don't worry if you're a little confused. I talk about that because People say, well, what's a waiver? I don't get this. Waivers are a part of the Medicaid system. So we have this state plan. It's the Ohio Health Insurance Plan for poor people called Medicaid. And the state plan says I got a doctor visit, hospitalization, prescriptions, this thing called an intermediate care facility, and nursing homes. All those things can be paid for by my Medicaid card. We've had those things for decades. But back in the 1980s, in another state in the Midwest, parents had kids with disabilities, moms, and they went to their system in this other state and said, I have a child with a disability, an adult, and I need help. They have Medicaid, I need help. And their state said, and we've got these quote unquote institutions over here. Whether it's four beds or a hundred beds, an intermediate care facility and a nursing home and a hospital, which are all Medicaid services, are by federal definition of institutions. It is what it is. Try not to be offended by the term. It is what it is. So these parents said, we need help. And their state said, and we've got help for you. It's, it's down the road and it's a 50 bed facility. These moms filed a lawsuit against their state back in the 80s saying, that's not what I want. I want services in my home and in my community, and I want Medicaid to pay for it. So the state and the federal government agreed to a settlement. And the settlement says, if you're willing to waive your right to that building down the street that you, we know you don't want, we'll give you funding to buy services in your home and in the community. So I'm seeing some light bulbs go off. All waivers are home and community-based waivers. They have to be provided outside of an institution other than respite care, okay? Um, we'll get into the details, but... So you'll, so you'll hear the term HCBS waivers, and that's what that stands for, home and community-based services. Okay, so the, the other part of the settlement says the waiver, that, the waiver service that you purchase. So an intermediate care facility, a nursing home, and a hospital are places. They're facilities. 
and you're buying a bed in that facility with your Medicaid card. A waiver is not a place. A waiver is a funding stream. It's a budget. The settlement says this is, and I always call the uh, facility-based services the blue plate special. You can buy a bed in that facility 24 hours a day care and in most cases it's quality care but it's 24 hours a day and you bought a bed if you don't like that bed you have the right to leave but just like in a hospital if you leave the hospital you leave all the services of the hospital at the hospital with an intermediate care facility with a nursing home the services are based around that facility with a waiver, it's a funding stream, it's a la carte. So you get a funding stream, not a place. And that funding stream can buy a place, but it's not 24 hours a day, typically. So you with me? So those of you who have waivers, somewhere in that pile of paperwork, you signed a waiver of your theoretical right to the institution you didn't want to begin with. The waiver can only be used to buy services at the intermediate care facility called respite care. So you could still get a weekend at Hattie Arlen and you could buy that with your waiver, which is a funding stream and a budget. But you can't go to day services on the ground of, grounds of a waiver or you can't buy a bed in that facility with your waiver. Are you all with me? This is really complicated, yes. Right. So what, what, where do you get uh, funds for day services? They, your waiver funds it. So, okay. So it's a good, thank you. We'll, we'll, <laughs> this is really complicated. So, yeah. <laughs> Does your child have one? I don't remember. Okay, all right. So let's back up to the late 1990s in Ohio. Until the late 1990s, most services for people with disabilities in Ohio were locally funded. We have our levies. Anyone who live outside of Ohio ever? I grew up in Pennsylvania. I had no idea what a levy was. The rest of the world, if you say you're working on the levy, they think you're working on a dam on the Ohio River. No one knows what a levy is outside of Ohio. We don't, the rest of the world doesn't operate this way. In the rest of the world, you pay your state taxes and the money is evenly distributed among all the counties or among all the cities. We do it different here in Ohio. Until 1997, we ranked 47th in the country in the use of federal funds for people with disabilities because we had our levies. We were doing really well, but a couple things were happening. Thank God people with disabilities were living longer but they were living longer. You know, when I was a child, people with Down syndrome lived until about 10 or 15. People with Down syndrome are living long, healthy lives now. People with cerebral palsy are living long, healthy lives. Uh, I mean, so the number of people with disabilities in Ohio has increased, but our levies haven't. The other thing that happened in the late 1990s is we started having Levies fail in the state of Ohio. So more and more levies were failing. So a group of us got together and went to our state legislature and said, okay, we support people with disabilities. We wanna help people with disabilities and we don't have any more levy dollars. We're running out. I mean, the steel mills were closing in Youngstown. The car plants were closing in Lorraine and Cuyahoga. Uh, the coal mines had started to shut down in Southeast Ohio we were in a pickle so we went to the state legislature and they said we don't have any money to give you so we began looking around and we found out we were 47th in the use of federal funds and we paid just as many federal taxes as new york pennsylvania indiana and kentucky and we weren't accessing it so we developed a plan got legislation that said ohio could refinance its system I don't know if you care about the history, but I always like to, if there's a problem, I like to follow the money. Like, why are things happening this way? For the last 20 years, we've been refinancing the Ohio system. So 
in the year 2000, if you were an adult with a disability, you were going to a sheltered workshop run by the county board and funded 100% by local levy dollars. You know, so it costs more than 10,000, but I'm not a mathematician. So let's say it costs $10,000 to go to the sheltered workshop, transportation and the workshop. Well, we developed a plan that said, okay, if I take Dave who has a disability and is going to the county workshop, whether it's Portage, Cuyahoga or where, and we flip a switch, very simplistic, and make him a waiver. Remember that 60-40? Instead of Cuyahoga County paying $10,000, now they only have to pay $4,000, 40%, cuz we refinanced and the federal government put in 60%. The plan at that point, at the turn of sounds terrible, the turn of the century. <laughs> at the turn of the century, the plan was for every person we refinanced, we could serve an additional person, or at least an additional person. The problem was the economy fell out. The bottom fell out of the economy. Levies were failing more, property values went down, and the money we had wasn't going as far. But we began refinancing anyway, and we were bringing in 60 cents on the dollar into our communities. Anyone from Lorraine? Lorraine doesn't like to play the waiver game. <laughs> so they're struggling now because they're still mostly 100% funded. Cuyahoga has done a good job. Trumbull is catching up. Uh, Mahoning County and Youngstown actually netted out more funding because they adopted a position every person in adult services will have a waiver. So every time someone graduates from high school, they get a waiver because the county's refinancing and they continue to draw down 60 cents on the dollar for every person they put on a waiver. Follow the money. There's a financial incentive for counties to put people on waivers because they bring in 60 cents on the dollar. Now they've got to have that 40% match. The other thing that makes our counties nervous is that there is no state law giving you a right to adult services. So Morrow County is just north of where I live in Columbus. Morrow County had 20 years when they couldn't pass a levy. There's no right to DD services. So they started shutting their programs and telling people to stay home. There was no local dollars. Um, a waiver, you don't have a right to a waiver, but once you receive a waiver, you have a federal right to everything it offers for as long as you qualify. Let that sink in. There's no right to a waiver. So we'll get to how do I stand in line and wait for a waiver. But once I get a waiver, I have a right to it as long as I qualify, which means as long as I function like I have a developmental disability, as long as I'm technically poor, I have less than $2,000, and as long as the county can ensure that I'm healthy and safe. So if Dave gets into the county workshop when he graduates from high school and it's locally funded and the bottom drops out of your county economy and the levy won't pass and the levy won't pass, the county can say, I'm sorry, Dave, we don't have the money for you. You're going to have to stay home. If I'm on a waiver and I'm going to that same workshop, the county can decide it can't afford as a county to operate the service anymore, but I have an entitlement to the service. Because I just the, my county just signed a deal with the federal government. It, it's like a heroin addiction, a nice one, but the county has signed a promissory note with the state who has signed a promissory note with the federal government that the waiver services will continue for me as long as the waiver exists, as long as I qualify for it. So many counties are slow to put people on waivers because there is a financial obligation essentially for the rest of my life. Now the waivers could go away. If Medicaid went away, that's different. But what I tell people is we've got over 30,000 people in Ohio on waivers. What politician is gonna dump 30,000 people with disabilities from a service and still be elected? You know, uh, the ARC has no financial resources, but we've got you. 
<laughs> you know, that counts for a lot. And the voices of mothers and fathers and people with disabilities counts for a lot. And remember, in the State House and in Congress, we are considered the worthy poor. We are the people, and our loved ones are the people that tax dollars were created to support. So we've got an advantage. But it's based somewhat on economy, somewhat on what your county is willing to do. The other thing that scares many counties is if a county funds the service 100%, the county gets to decide where the services are provided and how much you get. If you have a waiver, federal law gives you something called free choice of provider. Yeah. So think doctor, think health insurance. If I've got Blue Cross Blue Shield, I have the right to choose any doctor that accepts Blue Cross Blue Shield. And they have the right to say, I don't want you as my patient. It's the same right you have with a waiver. If you have a waiver, you get a budget. The county develops your budget, and I have a right to pick any provider that's willing and qualified. Qualified means they're certified by the state of Ohio, and willing means yeah, we're accepting new individuals, and you would fit within our provider network, and yeah, you can, we'll serve you. They can provide that service, health and safety. Yes, and they'll protect the health and safety. The county then retains the right. The county's power is they write the plan that authorizes the services that you have chosen, and the provider is paid a set rate, just like your doctor is paid a set rate. And it's a take it or leave, and leave it, but no deductible. Yeah, pay, it's payer of last resort. So you all with me? Okay. So I know. So remember, a waiver is not a place. A waiver is a funding stream. 